Hey, this is Tom, and today I'm going to teach you how to sculpt chainmail. To start things off, I'm going to work in my typical mix of green stuff, which is about one part blue to two parts yellow. But feel free to use any material, whether it's Procreate, Bees Putty, or Fimo. Other than the standard tools you need to push the putty around to get it into place, the only specific tools you need to use for sculpting chainmail is something to actually push in the distinct ring texture. And for that, I like to use a pin needle or, for making larger rings, different sizes of brass rods. And of course, if you're sculpting with green stuff like me, you'll want some lubricant. I'm using petroleum jelly. All right, let's work on the technique before we get started on the actual miniature. Take the putty we mixed up earlier and start pressing it on something flat. Here, I've just got a wooden dowel rod that I use for holding my miniatures when I paint them. And I'm just using a little color shaper here, size zero, to flatten out, smooth everything, and make it a nice surface. You, whenever you're doing texture detail, like chain mail, things like that, you want the putty to be as smooth as possible because you're not going to be able to smooth it and correct it later. Here you can see the different sizes you can get by using different tools. So this first one is a 0.8 millimeter brass rod followed by a 0.51 millimeter brass rod. And then lastly, just a sharp pointed pin taken from a dress shirt. I'll start by showing you the 0.51 millimeter brass rod since it's a little easier to see. When you're making chain mail, the real trick is to go in rows. You have to go in rows, but as you do it, you're not just pressing straight down. You're actually kind of pressing and doing a little hook down movement. And that what that does is that creates just a little bit of a pull on the material that ends up gathering the putty up and that's what gives it that ring shape. And it's especially reinforced when you pull that over the previous shape that you pressed in. In most cases, you want to start with the bottommost row of the chain mail or, or whatever will be the edge. And then when you complete the first row, you'll start pressing in the exact same pattern again, but you need to go in the exact opposite direction when you're pulling. Continuing with this alternating pattern is what will give you the illusion of the interlocking links and make the chainmail look very realistic. And a quick time lapse to finish off this little portion of putty. And one more so you can see what it looks like when it's done with the tiny little pin. You may notice that the ring detail doesn't stand out quite as much as it does with the larger tool. And that's really for a couple reasons. One, this pin is so fine that it just it just has trouble grabbing as much material. And second, because the putty is a little thicker and this is so fine, it has it's very easy to press in too far and not be able to get that little bit of surface putty that you really need to drag to create that look. Lastly, a quick little cheat here. When you are using a fine tool, you can just stab it. It doesn't look quite as good, but it's definitely quicker. Oh, and just so you have a size comparison, here is the 0 0.08 millimeter rod. Quite a difference in size. I would only use this if you were doing a chain mail on, for some massive rings on a giant or something like that. So here we have a lovely pig orc miniature sculpted by Bobby Jackson for RBJ Games. But you know what? He needs a chainmail cloth, so we're going to make him one. What you see here is I've gone ahead and sculpted the form of the coif. Anytime you're going to sculpt chainmail on a character, it's a hauberk, shirt, sleeves, gauntlets, whatever, you want to get the whole form sculpted and in place first. That way it kind of gives you the sense of like how the material will fold and lay and gives you a little bit of guidance to work with from the beginning. You want to make sure that the material isn't too thick, especially like I mentioned before, if you're doing a finer tipped uh, chainmail texture, it's even more important to make sure it's thin 
so you don't make your figure look overly bulky. And then you want to let this set up for a little bit. I let it, once I get it on there, I try and leave it for five, maybe even 10 minutes, just to let it set up and kind of hold that shape, and retain that overall form. Because when if you start sculpting the texture right away, you tend to be able to manipulate that overall form too much. And it can start to look a little bit like a blobby mess. So just like in the technique portion of the video, you want to start with a single row of rings. Now I started around the base of the coif, but I didn't want this to be, I wanted to have kind of the form of the chainmail to be focused around the ring around his face rather than having it more around the neck. Let's think of it as like he's kind of got this big tube where the, the front of the tube is around his head. A real chainmail, well you can make real chainmail this way, but most of the time that's not how they were done but he's a pig orc with kind of a longer neck and head and snout so I just thought that would be kind of a, a neat way to make it look. But the important thing is to make one row first that connects all the way around or it can go into a hidden area as well as you'll see I think that comes up here later in the video. Once you get that first row done though you're gonna start the second one you know just move up and start pressing the chainmail links in the opposite direction, a little bit over uh, the previous row, so that you kind of create that integrated linking look. Now if you're following along and doing this on your own figure, you may notice that at times it you can't quite follow that straight line. There might be areas where the, the material starts to bunch too much or it gets hidden and, it, and you'll find that you've got short rows or, or longer rows and that's okay. Uh, there's actually a little trick you can do here, and I show it right here. I realized that as the quaff is going to go down around behind his neck that it would be gathering more and there wouldn't be these just constant and consistent rings. So all you do is you start, you, you place the row of rings, but then you, you stop short. You don't let it go all the way. So you'll have a full ring, and then a shorter ring, and then a shorter ring still, and then eventually you'll come back in. Once, once the rows of rings have extended far enough, you'll come back through and just do a full ring all the way across. And that will kind of simulate how real chain mail, you have to create these kind of graded pinch points of lesser rings into greater rings, <laughs> greater rows of rings. I should probably point out, if you've ever made chain mail for real, it's super useful to have that knowledge and understanding. I have made it, and um, if you want to understand how it really works, go ahead and watch some videos. I'm sure there's tons of videos on YouTube about how to do it, and uh, it could really give you some good insight in making your chainmail look more realistic as far as how the patterns are created. And when you're making chainmail, inevitably some things will get a little squishy and messed up and just won't be as well defined. So I like to go through with a with my a little pin needle or my scalpel as you're seeing here or even exacto blade and just start to clean up some of the rings, especially the ones around the edges where where you can just see solid groupings of putty, but even where some of the points maybe you started adding in a few too many rows and of rings and they just started to push into each other, you can you can go back in and just give it just a tiny bit of reinforcement to clarify that detail and you don't have to do it everywhere just a little bit here and there and it does it just adds a lot and brings back a lot uh, more of that detail and that's how you sculpt chainmail and as you can see this is technique works great you can use it for adding a little bit of extra detail to an existing figure for a conversion or you can sculpt something from scratch you know like a knight clad in chainmail head to toe this is also a great technique to help develop those fine motor skills that are really needed to, to sculpt miniatures. Huh, sounds like a perfect way to keep sculpting.